Hey everyone, um, welcome to Structural Madness. Here's an interesting thing. Have you guys ever wondered how and what is a torsional irregularity and how it's actually naturally generated in the building? Here's a quick demonstration for it. So, there's a dummy bear over here. That's our flexible system. And it's a moment frame on this side. And I've so shown some stiff blocks um, on this side because it's a brace frame system. Now, during elastic stages, a brace frame system is way more stiffer than a moment frame system. So, what happens is when, you, when the structure actually deforms, this side will sway more because it's more flexible. Remember, gummy bears will always deflect more under the same load. So, just using that principles, I just want to demonstrate what happens if I shake this kind of a structure. So, I just applied a gentle push and you can see that it's actually twisting even though I've applied the push at the center of mass of the structure. Um, let's take a look at, from, at the deformations of the structure from another perspective. So, here is a plan view of the same system, three-story structure. This is the side of the moment frame. That's the side of brace frame. Now, just see how our gummy bear affects the entire behavior of the system. See, it's moving so much more on this side as compared to that side. So it's a stiffness issue. Let's say you have 100 kips of load. This gummy bear is not going to take that 100 kip of load. It's just going to flex out. But these guys can easily take that 100 kips of load, right? Without even deflecting a lot. So that's what exactly is happening. In other direction, I have brace frames in both, both the sides of the building. So if I actually push it, it's quite linear. It's a translational mode, but not in this direction. It's very torsional. So why does this happen? You must have heard the term called center of mass or even centroid. You know what a centroid is. Just like a centroid is the center of a geometrical area, center of mass is the center of the mass distributed on the tower plate. So because this is uniform, homogeneous, same mass everywhere, the center of mass will be right there. But similar to center of mass, there is a term called center of rigidity, which determines the line of resistance of that loads. So this brace frame has certain rigidity let's say that's four times the rigidity of the moment frame. So can you calculate how where will be the center of rigidity? It's pretty easy. It's basically one over five from this side. That's about 20% of the length of diaphragm from the brace frame. So it's lying somewhere over here. Let's put a block over there. Now what happens during an earthquake is you are the the building is applying load at center of mass because that's where your story forces in a rigid diaphragm ideal case that's that story forces right there but the line of resistance is there so imagine a cantilever beam now this is the fixed point this is the point load what happens at the beam end you get moments right that moment is equal to p times the distance between the two l so similarly, this building has a torsional moment that is equal to your story force Fx times the distance between the center of rigidity and center of mass. So that moment, that twist generates this response because it's moving a lot more on this side, not on that side. All the unbalanced shear is absorbed by this particular brace frame along with most of the storage here because this side of the building is just going along for a ride it's it's not offering that much resistance that's why torsional irregularity is bad for a building because the entire ductility capacity is governed by the stiffer system as, as that system is taking majority of the base shear of the structure now, if you don't understand and don't determine the correct ductility capacity of your building on the basis of your stiffer system, but you rely equally on the flexible system as well to resist the loads, it's not going to work because this guy is never going to see that level of load and this guy is going to see the level of load that's actually significantly more 
then you just calculate by linear analysis. So what you have to do in such scenarios is carefully pay attention to where the load is going and that's why code has introduced a torsional irregularity factor as well as row factor. What row factor does is it improves the redundancy of the system. Redundancy means the actual force capacity of the system even though seismic design is based on ductility approaches but it still provides some additional resistance to any motion. But let's say if you have such a building in practice, how can you reduce the torsion? There are only two ways. Either you make this side as well a brace frame or if architect or owner doesn't like that option, what you can do is use another ingenious idea is reduce the stiffness of this brace frame. So either you can use smaller braces to reduce stiffness of brace frame over here or you reduce the increase the aspect ratio of your brace angles um, so essentially instead of braces being more 45 degrees you can increase the brace angle so your brace frame becomes skinnier that will re reduce the stiffness of the brace frame and this system will behave more regular just like it is behaving in the other side sorry in this direction because it is brace frame and both sides if it's a shear wall, what you can do is simply reduce the length of a shear wall by a little bit and just as you know that moment of inertia is BD cubed by 12, if you reduce the depth of the section to half, the moment of inertia reduces by 8 times. So similar approach you can use over here and make it more regular and reduce your torsional irregularity. But along with making it more flexible, what you have to check is your drifts in the building should be less than allowable drifts, your shear should be less than allowable shears, and your overturning moments and everything should be resisted properly. Now a cylinder system will have more overturning moments which I'll explain later on but for this video I hope this was a good insight on how torsional irregularity affects the building and how you can solve it. This was just a small explanation behind it. I'll be posting a full blog using ASCE 7 as well as different books so that you can understand how torsional behavior of the building is harmful for the um, seismic performance. Till then, you can subscribe to our blog as well as our YouTube channel and stay tuned. Keep learning more and keep on carrying the madness. Thank you and have a great night. Bye.